Welcome back to my channel. I'm Cassidy. I am a registered dietitian and I share easy vegetarian recipes here most weeks and over on my blog at CozyPeachKitchen.com. If you're new here, you can hit subscribe to stay up to date with new videos. So I'm keeping things nice and simple this week. I am sharing three summer meal ideas. These are all very veggie centric, so they have a lot of fresh seasonal produce. If you have a garden that is just overflowing with veggies, then you are going to want to make some of these recipes. If you don't, you'll still want to make these recipes because in-season produce is A, more delicious, B, more nutritious, and three, it's usually more, C, it's usually more budget friendly when you buy in-season produce. So without further ado, let's jump into those meals. So for this recipe and actually all of these recipes, we are breaking my no ovens in summer rule, but that's okay because roasted veggies are the best veggies. So for this first recipe, we are making a sheet pan meal. So you'll start by dicing up all of your veggies. That's honestly what takes the most amount of time in this recipe. So I add some sweet potato, which isn't exactly in season, but it's a wonderful base, a very nutritious carb. I also add some yellow and orange bell pepper and then some diced eggplant. I'm adding a can of chickpeas. I made sure to drain and rinse those chickpeas before adding them. And then we're gonna to toss everything in some olive oil. I'm adding a few different seasonings to the sweet potatoes just to add extra flavor. And we're using these same seasonings over in the sauce for these bowls. We are going to roast these at 425 for about 30 to 35 minutes. You'll wanna keep an eye on the sweet potatoes because that is the part that is going to tell you that everything is ready. They should be super soft when you try one. Meanwhile, over on the stove, we are going to make this coconut curry inspired sauce. So you start by sauteing some fresh minced ginger and fresh garlic and a tiny bit of oil. I'm just using olive oil here. And once that's getting golden, but not like 100% done, you'll wanna add in these spices. So we're using some garam masala and curry powder, as well as some cumin, cumin and a little extra pinch of salt. Toast those for just like 30 seconds. This just enhances their flavor. And then slowly pour in that coconut milk. I am using one can of full fat coconut milk. We're gonna simmer this basically the entire time that those veggies cook. Ideally, it's going to thicken a little, but it is not a super thick sauce. So once those veggies are ready and that sauce is ready, you can go ahead and assemble the bowls. And a squeeze of lime juice is actually really important because the acid helps bring out all of the other flavors and really balances out the salty and the sweet. Okay, so recipe number two also uses eggplant because I am really trying to emphasize that eggplant is an underrated summer veggie that can taste really good when it is cooked right. So I cut the eggplant up into about one inch cubes and you do leave the skin on. I'm also adding some tempeh for protein. Feel free to skip this if you're not a big fan. And we are going to cook this in oil until it's golden. So use your eyes for this, not as much time. So once that's golden, you're going to add in a half cup of veggie broth. What we're going to do here is basically simmer the eggplant until it's softened. You want the eggplant to be really soft and almost ready to eat before we move on to the next step. Take all the eggplant out of there and you don't need to clean the pot for this step, but we are going to saute some ginger and garlic. Once that is aromatic, we are going to add in a few other super flavorful ingredients. So I'm using rice vinegar, some toasted sesame oil, soy sauce, and black vinegar. Now, if black vinegar is new to you, it is traditional to Chinese cuisine. It is sweet and it has this like licorice and orange flavor and it is so good. Also adding some light brown sugar because this is a quite sweet sauce. Then I add a cornstarch slurry and that just thickens the sauce. Add the eggplant back in and we're just gonna cook it for another few minutes. The eggplant will absorb some of those flavors and you don't want to stop cooking it until the eggplant is super soft. I recommend going more on like taste and texture than on appearance. And last but not least, this is just a classic tomato soup. So I'm using tomatoes on the vine, but any kind of slicing tomato does work well here. So I'm going to slice those tomatoes up and core them. Removing the core is really important because it's not going to cook down as much as the other parts and it can really affect the texture of the soup. 
I'm also slicing up two red peppers. This adds sweetness and it makes it a roasted red pepper and tomato soup. And one sweet yellow onion. I'm using my dahlia, but any kind of sweet onion works here. We're gonna spread all of that out on a sheet pan. Try not to overlap too much. Some overlap is okay because it's gonna shrink a lot. And toss that with a hearty helping of olive oil. I am using three tablespoons and I'm also using a full teaspoon of salt. So we're gonna throw that in the oven to roast at 425 for about 35 minutes. I would check on it at about the 20 minute mark, stir it a little if you need to. So what you want is for everything to be really concentrated and it's definitely a good thing if it starts to blacken, but you don't want it to become completely burned. So we'll take everything from that parchment paper and transfer it over to a blender. You could use an immersion blender here, but it'll end up a little more rustic and I like this soup to be super pureed. So I use my blender. We're also adding in some vegetable bouillon. If you've watched my channel before, you know I love bouillon. Next up, add a cup of water. You could add some milk or some coconut milk here if you prefer an ultra creamy soup, but I find that blending it is honestly enough to make it creamy. And a pinch of sugar. Honestly, I forgot to do this in the video, um, but I usually add like a handful of fresh basil without the stems, like a full cup of basil. And this makes one quart of soup, so I like to just store it in a quart sized jar. And it does freeze really well, but make sure to let it cool completely before freezing. I hope these recipes got you ready to get in the kitchen, or at least they got you a little hungry. Let me know down below what recipes look best to you. Personally, I love the tomato soup. I have been making it on repeat and I just eat it throughout the week with a grilled cheese and a salad, or I just eat it on its own with some crackers and cheese. It is so good. Anyway, let me know down below if you try any of these recipes. Thank you as always for watching and hit subscribe so you don't miss any new videos.